Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be taking a messy bit of product sales data and we're gonna be turning it into a nice interactive dashboard just so that you can see your insights at a glance. If you wanna see more videos like this, feel free to like and drop me a subscribe as well. And let's dive straight in. So yeah, as I just mentioned, we're gonna be going through this mess, which is hard to look at, no real insight to this, which you can see things at a glance and it's just much better to look at. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a total sales table and we're gonna be filling this in. So let's just set up the months like that. And then we're gonna need our products and a little quick tip equals unique. Select that column and it will just return all the unique values. And then we're gonna copy it and then we're gonna paste these values just over it. Uh, so it doesn't change anymore. Then we're gonna add this to a table with control T and then we'll set that. And I'm just gonna make this as my default so that it comes up every time. So now to grab this formula, uh, we're gonna need to do a sum ifs because there's multiple criteria. So sum range is gonna be the quantity sold. The first criteria range is gonna be the product and the criteria is going to be the product name here. The second criteria range is gonna be the date. And we want any date that is greater than or equal to this heading here. So we're gonna open quotation marks, greater than or equal, and then use the and symbol to connect this value here. The next thing we need to do is, um, because this will only grab data after that date, but obviously there's other months, so we're gonna to need to restrict it just to January. So the next thing to do then is to create our next criteria range of the date. And we're gonna use EO month. So it will be the same as here, so, uh, but less than and equal to. And EO month, which returns the last day of the month um, based on a specific date which is gonna be this date. And then we'll set our number of months to zero because you want the current month. And then we'll uh, just make sure we have all the number of brackets. And then that automatically calculates them. And then we're just gonna copy this formula across. Okay, and then just like that, we've got our total sales. And then the next thing we're gonna do is actually use this data to calculate our predicted sales. Uh, so I'm just gonna copy this table just for ease right now. Change this to predicted and then we'll clear all this. And we actually only need one column as well. And we should set this to April because it's the future. And then the most simple way to do this is just an average. It's not very dynamic. Um, there is a better solution using a pivot table, but I'll show you that in a moment. So as you can see there, that's just calculated the average. And then that will just be our predicted sales going forwards. So this bit's super simple. I will show you again in a second how to actually do this in a pivot table, which is slightly better. Okay, so now to actually utilize the predicted sales, uh, we're gonna need some kind of stock levels. Uh, so I'm just gonna copy this again for easy filling out. And I'm gonna put my stock levels in now. Okay, so now I've got those loaded in. Uh, what we're gonna need to do is create some conditional formatting so that we can compare these uh, stock values to the predicted ones. So what we're gonna do is highlight this, press conditional formatting, new rule, format cells that contain, and we're gonna do less than or equal to, and we're gonna set this as our reference here. Be sure here, because we've selected multiple rows, uh, we want this reference to actually move down. So we're gonna remove this dollar sign, which is the absolute reference. Uh, and that way only the column is fixed and the row isn't. Then we're just gonna add a peach kind of color, so it's not too invasive. And then we'll press okay. And as you can see, that has formatted it. So any value here that is lower than its counterpart will highlight in orange or peach. As you can see by the rules, uh, this is exactly what it looks like. Okay, so now we've got our data summarized here. Uh, it's okay, uh, but we are gonna want some kind of interactive dashboard just to make this a little bit better. So now I'm gonna show you how to do that with pivot tables. So I'm gonna insert pivot table, 
going to select the entirety of the data and then we'll get this now select date and as you can see it's been grouped by month if it doesn't do this automatically you can right click any day press group and make sure month is selected here and then it will do that for you i'm going to remove the days because i don't need that level of detail then i'm going to select product and i'm going to select the quantity sold i'm going to move the product to the column view so that you can see it in this format you can swap these round if you prefer to move uh, read this way but um, for the chart sake i'm going to keep it this way now we're going to insert a pivot chart so here we press in pivot table analyze pivot chart and it suggested a clustered column which is pretty perfect and we get this chart it's not the most pretty thing in the world um, but we're going to improve this now so let's actually create a separate sheet for the dashboard and then we're going to cut this and just paste it in here for us to work on so now first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these ugly field labels or buttons and right click it hide all field buttons on chart that just makes it a little bit better uh, we're going to also need a vertical axis this one's quite self-explanatory but these random numbers aren't so we're just going to put sales and then we're going to remove these ugly lines and the next thing we're going to add on here are some date labels so that we can actually see what these values mean i'm also going to go to format and i'm going to change sorry design and change the uh, colors uh, let's use something like this just a little bit prettier in my opinion and now because we're going to want to filter potentially on this data and drill down and look at specific months or specific products we're going to go to pivot chart analyze and add a slicer we're going to add two one for the product and one for the man the month press ok and you'll get two generated here and this is the most basic version of dashboard that you can create and i'm just going to show you quickly how we can make this even better so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off these ugly grid lines so we're going to press view and then we're going to unselect grid lines we're also going to undo the headings uh, but i will probably need them still so then we're going to add a background shape so insert illustrations shapes and we're going to use this nice curved rectangle and we're going to right click it send it to the back so that everything comes up on top of it let's just move this down for now we're going to put our uh, slices at the top something like this And if you want to make sure they're the same, control and select, press the slicer, and we'll just uh, not do that. Make them five centimeters by five, and then they're exactly the same now. So we'll put that one there and that one there. And then we'll scroll slightly, we'll put this down here. So not bad, but can still be improved so let's select this go to shape format and remove the outline we're also going to want to remove the background from this chart as well so select the chart format no shape fill and no outline and then that creates that but again it's a little bit harder to see so we're going to insert another shape just like that and we're going to set this color to something a little bit better to look at and remove the outline again we do also need this chart to be on the top so we'll right click it and bring it to front and then we'll just move this over and there you have it very very simple dashboard you can expand this as much as you want depending on any kind of insight you want to look at regularly uh, another thing i'm going to do because i like these tables is i'm actually going to copy them and i'm going to put them here that way you can see you've got your data here and we can make this a little bit smaller that's closer 
and then we can see the data here we can see the dashboard we can drill down on the dashboard and yeah just a lot of flexibility and insights at a glance so that's that for today uh, we covered quite a lot in this video if you have any questions at all just feel free to drop me a comment and if you want to see more videos like this uh, feel free to subscribe i'll see you in the next one